What's up, everybody? Nick Dwyer back for the 10th inning with another episode of This Day in Sports History. In yesterday's episode, we saw only the second switch hitter in MLB history join the 3,000 hit club when Eddie Murray, who was a member of the Cleveland Indians, would hit a single to be the 20th player in the 3,000 hit club. We don't have anybody getting their 3,000 today, but we have many important things to get into, including a lot of Wimbledons, the first collegiate baseball game, and some more no-hitters. If you all enjoy what you see, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Let's get to it. This Day in Sports History. We start out today in 1859, and not only do we have the first intercollegiate baseball game ever, but we also have the first intercollegiate competition in sports such as baseball, basketball, football, soccer, all of that stuff. This game was played between Amherst and Williams, and it was played under the old Massachusetts rules, where the game was a lot longer, inning-wise, and scoring was a lot more prevalent. As you can see, in Amherst ended up defeating Williams 73-22, to so almost 100 runs scored in the first collegiate baseball game. But now we move up into the 20th century, 1901, at the Wimbledon Championship on the men's side, Arthur Gord defeated defending four-time champion R.F. Doherty 4-6, 7-5, 6-4, 6-4 in three sets to win his first of three Wimbledon single titles and three majors. Two years later in 1903, we have another first. In France, we would have the inaugural Tour de France start on July 1st, where it would start in a southeastern suburb of France and it would take place over six stages and it would end on July 19th. The Tour de France has become one of the most popular bike races in all of the world, if not one of the most popular sporting events to watch in all of the world, and it had to get start somewhere, started in 1903. One year later in 1904, the third Summer Olympic Games would take place. They would take place in St. Louis in the United States, marking the first time in the Olympics history, one, it would be held outside of Europe, and two, it would be held in the United States. Not only would it be the first time it would be held in the United States, but the current three medal format, gold, silver, bronze, was introduced at the 1904 Olympic Games. Now we're going to move off some of the first in sports history for a little bit. Move up to 1916. Pirate shortstop Honus Wagner, at age 42 and 4 months old, becomes the oldest player to hit an inside the park home run. Wagner was one of the greatest shortstops in the game. He had the rare combination of defense, speed, power for his time, contact, he could just do everything you want. And he would give us one of the great last glimpses that we would see in his speed while he hit this inside the park home run at 42 years old. Four years later, we go from one of the greatest shortstops in the game to one of the greatest starting pitchers in the game. In 1920, Washington Senators pitcher Walter Johnson would throw his only career no-hitter as the Senators defeated the Red Sox 1-0. Johnson could have had a perfect game this game. He had to settle for the no-hitter, which, I mean, I guess is good. But in the game, 9 innings picks, 10 strikeouts, 0 walks. In the bottom of the 7th inning, the second baseman for the Senators would end up making an error. Therefore, someone would reach base. It would ruin his chance to get a perfect game, but he got a no-hitter. So, I think it's still pretty good. At the same time, Johnson was throwing a no-hitter in 1920. At the British Open... George Duncan erases a 13-stroke deficit after 36 holes to win his only major title. This would also be the first British Open played since World War I. Finally in 1920 at the Wimbledon Women's Tennis Final, Suzanne Langland defeated Dorothea Chambers 6-3, 6-0 in straight sets to win her second straight Wimbledon title and her second of eight overall majors. One year later in 1921, we're right back to Wimbledon, right back to the women's finals, and right back to Suzanne Langlin. Langlin defeated Elizabeth Ryan 6-2, 6-0, sounds pretty familiar, for her third straight Wimbledon singles title of five Wimbledon titles overall, and her third of eight majors in her career. Eleven years later, 1932, stay with Wimbledon, stay with the women's side, Helen Wills Moody defeated Helen Jacobs 6-3, 6-1, for her 5th of 8 Wimbledon titles and her 16th of 19 overall majors. Move up to 1938, but we don't go anywhere. We stay with Wimbledon, but this time on the men's side, Don Budge defeated Henry Austin 6-1, 6-0, 6-3 in straight sets to win his 5th of 6 overall majors and win the 3rd leg of the 1938 Grand Slam. 
Three years later in 1941, we're going to one of the greatest streaks in MLB history, if not the greatest streak in sports history. Joe DiMaggio, on the way to 56 overall, tied the previous record of Wee Willie Keeler's 44 game hit streak, which he would end up breaking the next day, obviously. Back to Wimbledon now, in 1949, on the men's side, Ted Schroeder defeated Yaroslav Drobny 3-6, 6-0, 6-3, 4-6, 6-4, in five sets. This would be Schroeder's only Wimbledon singles title and his second and final major. Now we have a no-hitter alert, no-hitter alert. In 1951, Indians pitcher Bob Feller throws his third career no-hitter as they defeated the Detroit Tigers 2-1. Now it does sound weird that the other team actually scored during a no-hitter, but Feller on the day, nine innings pitched, three walks allowed, five strikeouts. And the Tigers run would score after, to lead off the inning, the runner would get on via air, then steal second base, get to third on a throwing air, and then, with no outs, he would get sacked fly home. Four years later in 1955, at the Wimbledon men's final, Tony Travert defeated Kurt Nielsen 6-3, 7-5, 6-1 in straight sets to win his only Wimbledon title and the fourth of five majors. 1956 is the year now, and we move up to the LPGA Western Open, which saw Beverly Hansen, who shot an even par over the four rounds, win four shorts ahead of runner-up Luis Suggs, and this would be the second of three major titles in her career. Back to tennis. In 1960, at the Wimbledon men's final, Neil Frazier won his only title, defeating Rod Laver, 6-4, 3-6, 9-7, 7-5 in four sets. This would be the second of three majors for Frazier. We'll flip right back again, go to golf in 1961 at the U.S. Open women's final, Mickey Wright with a score of 5 over, win her 3rd US Open by 6 strokes. This would also be her 6th of 13 overall majors. Let's flip it back one more time. 1966, at the Wimbledon men's final, Manuel Santana won his last of 4 majors, defeating Dennis Ralston, 6-4, 11-9, 6-4 in straight sets. 1977, we stay with Wimbledon, this time on the women's side. Virginia Wade defeated Betty Stove. 4-6, 6-3, 6-1, in three sets to win her final of three majors of her career. Also in 1977, we have a 100-meter dash record on the women's side when East German sprinter Marlies Gore ran it in 10.88 seconds. She would end up holding this record until 1983 when she would break her own record, therefore holding it even longer. Move up three years to 1980, but we stay with a world record, this time in the mile. Steve Ovet would break the time for the mile with a 3 minute 48.8 second mile. And he would hold this record for one year. Two years later, we have another player who can make an argument that he has the greatest streak in all of sports history. Cal Ripken Jr. makes his first of 2,216 consecutive starts at shortstop for the Orioles after he would move there from being a third baseman which many thought was actually a controversial move and it might not work out. It's pretty safe to say it worked out for the Orioles. Two years later at the 1984 U.S. Senior Men's Open, Miller Barber with a score of two under wins two shorts ahead of runner-up Arnold Palmer to win his second Senior Open title. We stay with the U.S. Senior Open but we move up to 1990 now. Lee Trevino with a score of 13 under wins two shorts ahead of runner-up Jack Nicholas for his first Champions Tour major title. Stay in 1990, but go to the Canadian Open on the women's side. Kathy Johnston, with a score of 16 under, won two strokes ahead of runner-up Patty Sheehan for her only LPGA Tour victory. Now we're finally in the 21st century now. In 2001, at the U.S. Senior Open, Bruce Fleischer, who shot even par over the four rounds, won his only major one stroke ahead of runners-up Gil Morgan and Asao Aoki. Stay with golf in 2007 at the U.S. Open on the women's side. Christy Kerr with a score of 5 under won two strokes ahead of runners-up Lorena Okoa and Angela Park to win her first of two majors. Stay with golf in 2012 at the Senior Players Championship. Joe Daly with a score of 14 under would win his only career major two strokes ahead of runner-up Tom Lehman. Also in 2012, at the UEFA European Championship, defending champion Spain was going up against Italy in the final, and Spain would retain their title, winning 4 to nothing. 
For Spain, they scored two goals in each half. David Silva started off the scoring in the 14th minute, and then Jordi Alba, right before halftime, got one in the net in the 41st minute, giving them a 2-0 lead. In the second half, it wasn't until late in the second half they added more. Fernando Torres got a goal in the 84th minute, pushing it to 3. Then Juan Mata scored in the 88th minute, giving them a 4-0 lead, and they would end up winning 4-0 to get back-to-back titles and their third European Championship final title. Finally, we have two golf events to talk about in 2018. We have the PGA Women's Championship and the U.S. Senior Open. Let's start with the U.S. Senior Open. David Toms, who would shoot three under, would win one stroke ahead of runners-up Miguel Jimenez, Jerry Kelly, and Tim Petrovich. Then, at the PGA Women's Championship, Park Sung Hyun, with a score of 10 under, would win after a playoff with Nasa Hataoka and Rul So Young to win her second and final major of her career thus far. So there you have it. That's what happened on this day in sports history. If I missed anything, I do apologize. If I mispronounce any names, I also apologize. I will see you all tomorrow for Nick O'Dwyer and the 10th inning. Stay safe, everybody. Be good to each other. See ya.